You've probably heard the story about the salesman who was so good he could even sell a refrigerator to an Eskimo. It's not true, of course. Eskimos don't need refrigerators. They have nature's own way of keeping their food cold. But in warmer climates, refrigeration is part of our daily lives. Welcome to Did You Know, the ESCO HVAC Show. We will see you in uh, about 45 seconds or so. Make sure that you are subscribing to our channels, our LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, turn on notifications, and we are very excited to be here with you. It's almost time, about 30 more seconds. Make sure to grab your notebook and pen so you can jot down notes along the way because at the end of the show, you could have an opportunity to ask our guests questions so we can dive a little deeper into these topics. And here we go. Welcome to Did You Know, the ESCO HVAC Show. Well, welcome everyone to Did You Know, the ESCO HVAC Show. My name's Clifton Beck, and I am really excited to be able to help bring new changes in our industry and technologies and perspectives to help you get a grasp of how things are changing in our industry. We have a lot of things going on. If you haven't joined us, we've been talking about all sorts of changes in equipment and changes in refrigerants and looking at electrification and how many areas of the country are moving away from gas and focusing on low temperature heat pumps and technologies that will move us forward as we start looking at efficiencies of equipment and prolonging our life here on our planet. Looking at reducing our carbon footprint, looking at reducing CO2 emissions. And there are a lot of things that we can do in that process. Now, as we start moving into 2023, we're gonna see equipment changes, we're gonna see refrigerant changes, we're gonna see the Department of Energy really doing education on bringing us into a place of looking at equipment from different perspectives and how it impacts our total atmosphere, our total electrical grid. So, we're gonna focus on some different technologies. We're gonna look at things that we can do to improve efficiencies of equipment and how we can look at equipment from a a total energy consumption perspective, okay? Not just new equipment, because we have a lot to learn about new equipment, but we wanna focus on things that we already understand today. So, got a couple great friends in our industry, uh, Jason Abju from ESCO, and we've got Aaron Fagan is gonna be teaching us a little bit more about soft start technology. And what is soft start technology? Well, um, it's a little bit different than some of us are used to seeing. And we want to help you understand what that is and how it differs from a hard start technology because they are different functions. We are going to be seeing a lot more energy and renewable energies in our future, things like wind and solar. And we're going to be needing to be more cautious of how we impact our electrical grid, right? A lot of conversations that we have is on what happens when we go to electrification. Can we handle that? Well, yes. As long as we are managing our equipment properly and we're being responsible for our installations and our services and we're helping our consumer have the most efficient system possible. You're going to see a lot more trends. Here's a great article from Scientific American talking about spikes on the electrical grid from energy consumption of air conditioning equipment. The ESCO team and HVAC Excellence has been doing a lot of partnering with the Department of Energy, looking at how to educate properly and looking at new trends in equipment and how we can do this as a village. You've heard us talk about this a lot, right? We have to approach this as a village, not just one entity, everyone coming together to move forward and bring a better perspective of the life and the equipment that we work with, right? So what is a soft start? If you have already worked on things like mini splits and anything with an inverter, you've already encountered soft start, but you didn't necessarily notice it unless you were listening to that compressor when we fire up. 
right? Anytime that we're talking about a inverter driven system, we're talking about a compressor that has variable rotation and it's being driven by an inverter board. So when you listen to a mini split, it never starts up on 100% capacity. It always starts at a reduced capacity. Now it might hit 100% for a fraction of a second to get it moving, but then it reduces it back down a lot of them at 25 to 35% capacity and then we'll start increasing as we go, right? So we're reducing the inrush of current on that electrical motor. So what about our legacy equipment? Technology is great going into new equipment, right? But what about things that are already existing? It's what we're going to talk about a little bit today. Some of the things that we have as options, because if we're talking about a legacy system, typically we're talking about a compressor, hopefully a higher efficiency compressor like a scroll or a rotary. And we're typically talking about a contactor, right? See that an awful lot in our industry. Not a lot of staging being done on our PSC driven air conditioning units. So what can we do? Well, Let's look at some things that we already encounter to understand how they work. Let's look at a PTCR. So we're talking about a positive temperature coefficient resistor. We're talking about a non-moving part. So it is just a resistor that changes resistance based on temperature. So we use that in conjunction with our run capacitor. We're kind of bypassing around. So as we have that inrush of current, it heats up, our current flows through, and we're able to create a phase shift between our run and our start windings, usually about a half of a second or so, to be able to get things moving a little bit quicker. You've probably seen those. Hey, hello, Sebastian. Hey, if you're out in the audience, let us know where you're from. We wanna know who all is joining in with us. Where are you at? Are you in the US? Are you abroad? Let us know. So we're gonna see PTCRs, if you haven't already seen them already. Mm -hmm. We always talk about hard starts because that's a common component in the industry. So what we're doing there, we're simply adding a start capacitor along with the relay so that we can engage for a short period of time to be able to shift that phase to get the motor up and running faster. Used a lot on equipment that is struggling to start. Say maybe we've had some insulation breakdown and we need to be able to you know, get a little extra torque on that motor to longevity is really what it's there for. Now we do see some periodically on new installations. Yeah, it's, it happens. It depends on the actual torque rating of the motor inside of the compressor. So we're amplifying the torque. We're not amplifying voltage. We're just amplifying the able torque for the amount of current that we have. We're shortening the window that our current is utilized. Here is one of the downfalls of using hard starts. When we're using a thing like a hard start, we're basically taking our current, we're shortening up the window that is being applied to the phase, to the windings. And so we have the potential for creating excess heat. Now, does it get us by? Absolutely. Have I used them in the past? Lots and lots and lots of times. So understanding the application is where the hard start comes into play how it can actually work for your application. But there's another one that we haven't seen a lot of and we really have to talk about. And it's soft start technology that can be utilized on permanent split capacitor driven compressors, PSC motors that are in our compressors. So what are we doing with a soft start control? We are taking a solid state control board and we are controlling the current that is being driven into our startup of our motor. So we're actually grabbing a hold of our current and we're controlling the way that it is applied into our windings, into the phasing of our motor. What can we do with that? That's what we're here today to discuss. We're gonna dive into what that looks like. I put one on my own system. Aaron sent me one over to do a little evaluation of what you can do with a soft start on a legacy style system. Check this out. So we're just talking about a 14 sear unit, right? I have a video we'll play later, kind of demonstrate what it took to install it and some actual live data logging readings of that. So on my 14 sear, R410A system, it's about three years old. I had a inrush current. A lot of people don't realize how much current we draw on PSC motors on startup. It's pretty significant. So on this three ton 14 sear, about three years old, I drew an inrush current of about 47.14 amps on startup. And that's using a redfish meter and doing some data logging, okay? Now, after installing a soft start device on my unit, I was able to reduce that inrush current down to 14.34 amps. 
And Aaron's going to show us a little bit later exactly how it's doing that, how we're controlling that inrush of current. But I just wanted you to see what it actually looked like on my own. And total install time, you know, I was taking my time. I was kind of particular. I like a clean install. So took my time and was still done in, you know, under 50 minutes. So realistically, 20, 25, 30 minutes tops to be able to install a soft start on a legacy style system. So it just proved to me that it is very possible to help control our current on our legacy systems going forward. And there's other applications where that could really come into play. So Aaron, thanks for joining us today. And uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and then let's dive into soft start technology. Well, yeah, thank you, Cliff. I appreciate uh, you guys having me on the show. Excited uh, to talk about this. So a little bit about my background. I've been in the HVAC industry for about 14 years, spent uh, the cutting my teeth in the distri distribution side of things, um, and then got into the manufacturing side uh, years later. Um, and, uh, you know, really excited about the, the soft start home and, and talking about soft start technology. So uh, I'm with soft start USA. Uh, we make a product called soft start home. And that product is a uh, single phase uh, product uh, meant for units anywhere from, you know, one up to six tons mm -hmm. uh, and up to 240 volt. Um, so it's a nice product that, uh, you know, I'm excited to talk about um, and how this may benefit, you know, like you said, legacy units, units that are out there. We have, you know, 12, 13, 14, you know, up to 16 seer, single stage, two stage units. Uh, PSC that, motor driven. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so what are some of the common issues? I mean, we've all seen them, uh, whether it's your own house or you've been in someone's house, right? You see, you know, older systems dimming. that are loud. They're What's inefficient. That vibration? Yeah, exactly. Sure. You know, flickering lights, the, the thumping that comes on, the vibrating pipes. Um, you know, we're, we're now experiencing more brownouts and blackouts across oh, the man. country with Absolutely. power grids failing and more storms coming through. Uh, you know, systems are short cycling. We, yep. we all know that that's a real issue. Uh, and then, you know, low power surges, you know, coming in and out. And all that does is damage the compressor, you know, over time. Uh, the heat to the windings and components just, you know, will kill a compressor over time. And then, of course, you know, uh, most of us, when there is a power outage, right, we're sitting in the dark, you have a candle or, you know, a lantern, battery powered, whatever it may be, and you're wishing, you know, you had your AC unit running, uh, yeah. keeping you cool or, or warm. Absolutely. Um, so the soft start, you know, is a option that we can talk about and how that benefits, you know, you may be able to run your AC or heat pump. Yeah. Cause when we think about loads on generators, you could look at a system that has a current rating of, you know, like with mine, you know, it had a run amperage of around 8.8 .8 amps. Well, that's fine and dandy if I have a source to supply 8.8 .8 amps, but how am I going to get it turning when I need 47 amps just for the startup? Only for a short period of time. But that's where it comes into play when we're talking about generators or battery sources, where systems are um, systems that are designed for backup are not necessarily rated for those large inrushes of current. They're on steady load ratings, right? Right. So now we have to make sure that if we were sizing a generator for like an air conditioner, we can't size that for eight and three quarters amp. We have to be able to get the thing up and running. So it makes a huge that's been, change. That's been the issue, correct. Uh, so, you know, you need a much larger generator uh, if, you know, in the past to run your, uh, you know, air conditioner or heat pump if you wanted to do that, so. Sure. One of the comments that just came in from our, um, from our attendees is, is there a legitimate way to prove a brownout is the cause of a failed compressor? Well, I'll tell you, I had a, uh, I had a really interesting scenario. Uh, it's been a couple years ago where I had compressor failures on a inverter piece of equipment. I had control board uh, issues that were the same way. And so we were looking to prove that we had a voltage issue going to the unit. So we actually installed one of the ICMs, which we talked mm -hmm. um, to ICM here a few weeks ago, and we were able to do a little bit of monitoring. So we also added a data logger 
longer to that. So we put the ICM on it to protect it from overcurrent because our suspicion was that our voltage was dropping so significantly that our current was going up. Because remember, if we're talking about Ohm's law, right? If I got 47 amps right here, right now at this voltage, if my voltage goes down, my required current to keep the same momentum, the same force, my current is going to go up. So 240 volts at 47 amps, yeah. If I drop that down to 160 volts and now my 47 has turned into 70 or 80 amps, absolutely we can have some compressor issues by brownout scenarios. So what we were able to prove by doing data logging of that circuit is that we did have a significant voltage issue to that area. And so we had to contact the electrical company to come out, put their own logging equipment on it. Of course, no responsible fault taken, but was definitely um, analyzed and proven that we had low voltage scenarios to the areas. So absolutely. Now, is it going to take some work to prove that? Yeah. Do we have things to eliminate some of the consequences of brownouts? Yes. We have voltage protection and now we have means of reducing inrush current in those scenarios. So great question out there, Nick. Thanks for putting that out. Yeah, uh -huh. so um, if we want to go to the next slide, mm -hmm. um, you know, some of the things that, you know, I just like to put up is some bullet points. But, you know, as you mentioned, you know, the goal of this uh, soft start home is basically to reduce the inrush amps to the unit. So we, right. we have been able to document that we can uh, get up to about 70 percent uh, reduction in the inrush amps. So as you mentioned, you know, 47 down to 14. Uh, my own unit was 65 down to 24. Uh, mm -hmm. So, you know, significant reduction in the inrush amps. Um, so we have an energy, you know, reducing um, device. Uh, we, as we mentioned, you know, we're looking to help quiet the unit. Um, as we all know, you know, some of the, you know, if you have an older unit that's loud, the compressor's kicking on, making all types of noises, that could be right outside your bedroom window. It could be yeah. outside your baby's room. It could be right next to where you're entertaining. We've all been places where, you know, the condenser is right next to the, uh, the patio and, you know, you're trying to have yeah. people over and you can't hear. Because Absolutely. Yeah. Exactly. Startup. So yeah. I actually make a point in my video because I was very impressed. So, um, you know, I, I'm a fanatic of audio quality. Um, that's just me. Um, I'm, I'm fairly in tune to, to frequency changes. And I have always loved the sound of an inverter when it fires up. Call me weird. Call me working on in you know commercial environments where you've got thirty different you know uh, compressors unloading and inverting and uh, modulating with VFDs. But I love that sound of a soft startup. And so with my own unit, you actually hear an audio clip later. I actually get that. You get that slower on startup that. Um, I don't know. Call me weird, but I love that sound. So no, I, mean, I do, do too. And I think, you know, as neighborhoods get, you know, the houses get closer and closer together, that could mm -hmm. be an issue. You know, sure. everything kind of firing up at one time. Yeah. You know, people are sensitive to noise, you know, some more than others. And, you know, it's a real, you know, it's a real issue where, you know, people hear the compressor, you know, kicking on and it bothers them. So, yeah. you know, this is, you know, one option to help do that. Um, as we mentioned already, you know, we look to extend the life of the compressor because we're reducing the inrush amps, which then helps Mechanical you know, with the heat and you everything bet. to the compressor. Um, you know, we allow for a possibility of uh, backup power, whether portable generator, whole home generator, or solar with battery backup. Uh, mm -hmm. You can do that now, as you mentioned, you know, if you're at 14 amps on your home, right? And running at eight or nine amps, you know, uh, a smaller portable, you know, uh, excuse me, generator yeah. uh, hooked up to, you know, correctly to your home can power your air conditioner and now can power, you know, your refrigerator and a few other lights and some charging, you know, ports. So you can, you know, be fairly comfortable during a blackout, you know, so sure. that's what we're looking to help do. Uh, we do obviously have some built-in surge protection from, you know, low power spikes or, as you mentioned, overcurrent, um, and then helping, you know, with the short cycling, again, with, you know, being able to turn off and lock it out for three minutes and, and you know, give it time to um, 
come back on. And then, you know, again, we're pretty compatible with almost any residential unit out there uh, up to six tons. So we're talking permanent split capacitor motor driven though. So we're, we're not talking about adding it to an inverter. We're talking about things that are already using a run capacitor start, which a majority of our equipment, 16 and zero and under are yeah. permanent split capacitor, even if they're two phase or, or two stage equipment. Uh, you know, right. Paul just made a good comment, an interesting point too. He says that Texas has been using uh, mini soft starts for their generator cells since the freeze. So I imagine this is a big push now that people are starting to get an understanding of what soft start does for a generator. Yeah. Well, right. So I think you make great point, um, Paul. I think you said, Paul, yeah. um, in the sense that, yeah, I mean, one of the examples I use all the time is just that, right? You know, Texas and their freeze a couple of years ago, pipes sure. bursting, you know, people are ice skating on their pool, whatever the case may be. I mean, they weren't ready for that. And how nice would it have been able to, you know, fire up some backup power and be able to, you know, not have those issues going on. Think about the heat pumps. Think about the people that had a heat pump and thought, man, I've got a generator. I got a portable generator. Let me go see if I can hook it up and fire up my heat pump and at least get something running. And yep. probably couldn't get their unit started because they didn't have enough current capability. Right, because they have the out, you know, the outdoor unit that needs to fire up at, you know, higher amps. And higher so soft start would definitely help with that. Now, on the flip side, if they would have had, you know, a, uh, you know, propane or gas furnace, Right. And all they needed to power up was the blower motor. Sure. They probably could do that. Yeah, so. exactly. Great stuff. Yeah. So, you know, this slide basically just, you know, shows much like your, you know, own personal experience was, you know, standard startups can be 65 to 85 amps. And mm -hmm. after you're putting on, you know, the soft start home, we've seen an average reduction down between 18 and 28 amps big difference, you know, again, in that inrush of amps, what that does to the compressor over time and what, you know, uh, that could help with many different things, longevity and, and everything else. Um, the, here's the specs on it, as we've already talked about, it's a quick, easy install. You're pretty much taking off the, you know, the outdoor panel you're putting in right next to where, you know, the capacitor and contactor are and you're tying it in. And we do supply a color-coded, um, easy wiring uh, diagram. If someone Based on brands, too. It's not just right. a generic universal. There's a few different ones depending on the manufacturer of your equipment. Correct. If, if you take off the panel and you give us that wiring schematic number, yep. um, which is uh, right on there, we actually take, you know, 24 hours or less, we can get back to you and give you exactly, you know, your wiring schematic uh, diagram, color-coded. So it, you know, it's easy to install. So that would be at soft start home slash. Home yeah. Well, so the, for technical support, you would basically yeah. just go to softstarthome.com, click yeah. on um, customer support, go to right. technical support. You can email them or call them. Gotcha. Okay. Very, very cool. Yeah. Cause it's really neat to be able to, uh, you know, to know that someone's already taken the time to convert wiring. Cause that's not always the easiest thing, especially for technicians who have not spent a lot of time in changing wiring. You know, there's a lot of times if we're used to replacing parts, we're a wire at a time, but there is a little bit of wiring changes. And this is one of the reasons that I, I like to point out to go back to your proper wiring diagrams, because we are doing a couple wire changes. So if we talk about like a hard start kit, we're running parallel onto our run capacitor. So we're tapping onto an existing current supply. Now with the soft start, we're actually cutting in and controlling the power going to the run capacitor. So we do have a couple of wires to move to, you know, get you into um, a new wiring schematic. So very important to follow the instructions to get the wiring diagram. And yeah, all color coded, very, very clean wiring diagram. Absolutely. So I just wanted to show a couple of different, um, you know, uh, examples. Uh, you see the one basically uh, there is for a, a Goodman 14 sear, and then mm -hmm. the other one is for a Nordine uh, 14 sear heat pump. Gotcha. Um, so again, you know, just different applications, but if you give us, you know, your exact wiring schematic number, we'll give you a beautiful uh, color-coded um, wiring diagram that's going to make it really easy to put it in. They do look good. Yeah, it's always nice to see colors. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the other nice thing is you'll see on there all the wiring connectors. Uh, mm -hmm. And you know this, Cliff, from putting it in. We give you basically a free bonus everything. kit that has everything. Zip ties, yeah. 
all the different male, uh, female butt connectors. Yep. I've got spares and, uh, you know, I, I like spares. If I had to run back and forth, you know, or I didn't, you know, I don't have a service truck like many of, sure. you know, our HVAC techs would, but, you know, even to run back and forth to your van and have to get all the different connections and figure out what you need or run to the hardware store or the yeah. box store or to your uh, time is money distributor. That's just time, right? Absolutely. We want to make this literally a 20, 30 minute install. So yeah. We're going to supply you with everything you need. I'm anal about keeping things neat and tidy. And it's probably the only product I've seen that had enough zip ties that came with a product for me to install. <laughs> well, good. I'm glad. Yeah, glad. But, yeah. you know, I wanted to show a couple, you know, um, you know, yeah. install pictures uh, you know, one is, uh, right there next to the capacitor, as you can see, and above the contactor, that's actually my own unit. Oh, okay. Um, and then on this other one, it was a 16 sear, uh, Goodman unit, uh, that so had a pretty good size control board in the cabinet. Correct. There's a mm -hmm. control board in it. And then it also, uh, had from the local power company, it had, you know, uh, one of their uh, devices come in because they're, you know, controlling uh, some of the peak demand power. So yes. it was really tight in there. Sure. I was able to mount it underneath that um, before the service ports and wire it back up nice and neat. So, so NEMA uh, certified enclosure. So, yep. So tight. it's okay. uh, it's a quick, easy install. Like I said, once you've done it a few times, 20, 30 minutes, yeah. um, color, you know, custom color coded wiring instructions at your request. Uh, we give you the bonus install kit with all the wiring um, ends. And then uh, if you register it, which again, it comes with a little um, code, uh, yep. you'll get a, an additional year warranty. So it's one out of the box or two once it's registered. Gotcha. So applications is really cool because of the voltage ratings. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So, um, you know, some of the applications we see is, you know, just on your typical um HVAC unit. We just talked about what the benefits are just to the unit, right? To the compressor, to the longevity, to, you know, your own home, you know, power. Uh, there's a lot of just benefits to installing it right on a unit. Um, but if you get into, you know, backup power, you think about portable generators, right? They're usually not very large. And so, you know, you plug in a portable generator uh, to your home, um, through a transfer switch that your, you know, you or electrician needs to put in, um, mm -hmm. and tie that into your breaker box, you know, you get your limited power. So usually air conditioner is not one of the things that you're going to be able to put on there, but with the soft start home, you actually can select that as one of, you know, uh, the, uh, appliances that you can run. So that that's really nice to be able to see, uh, whole home generators, same thing. A lot of people invest a lot of money in a whole home generator right. and they're great, but they're very expensive. And most of the time they have to go to the largest, you know, size possible. That's what I'm just thinking about load capacity. House. Yeah. And sometimes they still don't include the air conditioning or heat pump. Right. Most times so they don't. Yeah. This will reduce the size that you need of any type of portable generator, whole home generator, sure. or your solar and battery backup. And then that leads us into that. We're moving into renewable energy. Um, Absolutely, we have we are. The, um, the IRA or the you know Inflation yeah. Reduction Act, and there's tons of you know great benefits to that and um, rebates and different things you can get. So you know we're a believer in you know hey if you can get solar and battery backup that's terrific. We're yep. moving in that direction, electrification of the home. But again, you're going to have limited battery power. So putting on the soft start home on your, you know, unit will again, allow you to have longer battery life, be able to power up more appliances. Uh, Man, I think about my off gridder friends, you know, the ones that can only use small systems because of their current capabilities. Correct. Um, man, it expands your equipment selection when you can start monitoring and controlling those startup currents. No, absolutely. Uh, oh. You know, off grid is, is definitely, you know, growing um, as well as, you know, we we started originally soft start USA started with RVs and and the marine world because, exactly. again, you know, you're off grid, off you're in grid. The middle of nowhere and you're trying to fire up, you know, the generator on the RV. And guess what? It can't handle the air conditioner. So wow. you have everything else running, but you're sweating or you're freezing. So makes complete sense. Even when you have limited amount of current to supply what you need. 
Yeah, the only thing right. you do is exactly. make make accessories to reduce that. So yeah. So these three infographics really are, you know, enhance the performance and longevity of just your unit by itself. So if you're sure. putting a soft start unit just on your air conditioner or heat pump, you know, it's gonna have those benefits to, you know, prolong the life of the unit and give it some better performance, uh, lessen the noise, you know, help with, you know, uh, the draw of your home and and uh, a lot of other things. Then the next slide essentially shows you with, you know, again, using a 30 amp, you know, portable generator mm -hmm. uh, and having the benefits to be able to fire up your air conditioner or heat pump and then still have some other appliances. And you get sure. into, you know, health concerns, right? We know, you know, that you have infants or you have elderly or you have people with, you know, medical devices that they need. Powder out power outages, you know, are definitely, you know, a concern for these mm -hmm. individuals. So again, we're looking to be able to offer someone a, you know, a reliable, affordable, you know, backup power solution by using the soft start. Home. Nice. And then this one basically is, you know, solar and batteries. You can now, you know, run your AC or heat pump off of solar batteries. Again, depending on the size uh, right. batteries that you have and hopefully be able to run them longer uh, using the soft start home. Very cool. So you're a tech guy. Uh, yeah, Obi field tech. Show, show me the results. <laughs> right. So I think, you know, it's important. We can talk all day about how great it is, but what are the results? Yeah. So show me, show um, me, show me. We had a guy named Mike Sokol. Uh, mm -hmm. He is a uh, electrical engineer and a sound tech, and he loves, you know, monitoring devices and data loggers. And so we asked him, you know, does this work? You know, and so he went out basically and used a whole bunch of his equipment and uh, he monitored a two ton um, carrier AC unit, uh, 13 seer um, older unit. And, uh, you know, these are the results that he got. So um, basically, you know, the top chart shows he monitored a hard start uh, on the unit. It's starting up, you know, stock and then the soft start. And uh, basically what he got was the hard start in about a minute and uh, 1.5 seconds, excuse me, mm -hmm. um, fired off its uh, 74 amps all at once, uh, just as you had mentioned earlier. Right. Um, the stock start took about 1.6 seconds. Uh, and again, at the peak, you know, 74 amps. Um, but interestingly enough, the soft start only took 1.3 seconds and reduced it down to 24.8 amps. It is pretty so crazy. That's the result he got. So, you know, it's amazing, you know, that we're able to do that in, in a slightly shorter period of time, but to be able to ramp that up, you know, uh, in a soft, you know, slower you know, situation uh, than before. So basically, you know, a little bit quicker than a you know, hard start, um, but, you know, we're able to reduce that by 65%. So, yeah, slowing down yeah. that inrush of current is very significant when you can see it like that and you can actually get a physical representation. Because one of the things when we start talking about, you know, current is we're talking about, you know, amplitude versus time. Mm -hmm. And being able to show it on a, an actual pictorial like that gives you a, a good representation of what we're talking about. We're not talking about super sharp spikes that you can't measure on a meter. We're right. talking about a nice gradual increase. Um, Correct. And so, you know, the other thing is, you know, this is a quote from him. Does it work? Yes, it certainly does. Here's the data showing how the soft start lowered the inrush mm -hmm. uh, current from 74 amps down to 24.86 amps. That's a current reduction of 65 percent. And it stops the loud bang every time the compressor starts up. Yeah. Plus, absolutely. it appears that the soft start home can reduce KWH usage a bit. I'm still gathering data, crunching numbers, but there's a significant, significantly less watts per second of energy used during each starting cycle, which could add up to a few dollars savings on your electric bill. Yeah, exactly. um, that's his statement. We're not saying this is an energy saving device, but we do believe, right, that if we can reduce the amount of amps every time it starts up, right, there's a reduction in energy. So, you know, um, we're, we're, we're hopeful that, you know, they're, they're, we may be able to prove that one day. But what we do know is that this does significantly reduce your amp draw and will extend the life of your compressor. Yeah, And good again, stuff. You know, he put it right there uh, for you guys uh, in data. Yeah. 
Uh, customer testimonials. So we, we have several customer testimonials yeah. that, and we're putting more and more up on our website all the time. But one that I thought was interesting um, was the one before that, that we had a guy out in California. He put yep. it on his unit and he said that he was actually seeing a slight re you know, reduction in his monthly utility bill. Yeah. Like, pretty interesting. Um, it, and then the last one there, if you don't mind, yep. um, basically was, you know, uh, this individual said, you know, he had an older 16 sear unit, he put it on and that, you know, basically it reduced the noise. Um, and he was happy about that because that was right near his patio and his kitchen window. Sure. So when he's entertaining, it was a problem and he has solar and he's looking to get battery backup. So, you know, he's got his unit prepared for when he does that. So. Yeah, absolutely. Kanaga just uh, made the comment that you know, he has that loud bang every time he comes on and it can get annoying uh, because, you know, when you talk about a mechanical system, you know, what can you do to the internals of a compressor? Not really much of anything. We can do some external add-ons to help, you know, control scenarios that we have like sounds. So, right. You got vibration pads and you have compressor blankets and mm -hmm. then what else do you have? Right. Here's Not one. a whole lot of other options. You know, this is again, another option for you. I love it. Great option. So we feel like we get first class support. You know, that's what's going to separate us from anyone else out there. Sure. You know, we provide marketing materials for anyone who needs them. We have a great website. We have, you know, free tech support, live and web ticketing. We have free shipping, which, you know, in this today's world, keeping up with Amazon, but, you know, we believe in free shipping. Sure. We have a hundred percent money back guarantee within the first 90 days. You either love it or you return it no questions asked. And then we have best in class warranty with the two year warranty. So very cool. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to Good put question up some, here. some, some great question, you know, frequently yeah. asked questions, right. And uh, whether or not you want to read them off or you won't. Oh no, yeah. These are great because these are things that I would be asking as a tech, you know, I get something that's in a box and I can't see, I'm gonna go, okay, is this a transformer with a capacitor? What are we doing here? Yeah. Yeah. No, exactly. So no, it's not a transformer. Uh, transformers, you know, either step up or step down voltage and a soft start, like you mentioned already is a solid state system. Uh, and that essentially, you know, we are reducing the influx of, uh, current going into the unit and, uh, over a very short period of time, but we're ramping it up. So it's not all at once. Like you mentioned, the heart starts all at once. Um, you know, the soft start is not, it's gradual. Yeah, kind of segues into, you know, how's it different from a hard start or a start assist? Because we're going to see different terms out there for uh, different components. So if I think of a separate capacitor, start capacitor and relay, I'm thinking about a hard start. If I'm thinking about a, a current uh, sensing technology, then I'm thinking about a start assist. So, um, now we get into a soft start and it's a completely different animal. Correct. Yeah. I mean, you mentioned it already. Look. A hard start is essentially a large capacitor. It's going to collect all that energy and it's going to release it all at once. You know, that's really hard on the compressor. Yeah. You know, you're talking about aging compressors, right? And you're trying to extend that, you know, them right. turning over. Great and, to get it by a little bit longer. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and you know, hard starts, some t you know, can can affect the, you know, longevity of that compressor. The soft well, start again is, you know, we're trying to extend the life by reducing that, you know, up front. Uh, so one of the questions that came in, um, what's the dimensions on the device? Um, I'll get that into the chart. I've actually probably got that over here on my installation mate. And we've already talked, the thing is watertight. So if it cannot be installed under the cover, we do have external access for that. Correct. Um, you longevity know, one of the questions is, yeah, how long mm -hmm. is the life expectancy? So uh, again, electrical components, you know, right. um, have different life capacities, but you know, if installed right and everything's good, uh, it should last the life of the unit or longer. And they're rated to withstand temperatures down to minus 30 and 175 degrees Fahrenheit. So puts us into some good places. Yeah, absolutely. Nice. Okay, very good question. Can it be a replacement for a hard start in a surge protector? So the question, yeah, so that's a great question, right? And the answer is yes, it can definitely be a replacement for a hard start assist. Uh, or start assist. Um, but as far as uh, the surge protector, you know, we are, you know, we typically being put on units that 
you know, aren't inverter. They're not going to have, you know, a lot of control boards. And so therefore, a lot of times surge protection isn't used. We would never say right. that we are a replacement for surge protection, but we do have surge protection built into our unit. Yep. And then as far as uh, the hard start, you know, yes, we, as I said, we can be a replacement, but you must remove the hard start, you know, to install yep. the soft start. Yep. Can't have an additional start assembly on that. Okay, so and we've talked about compressors a little bit. So we are talking about PSC, permanent split capacitor driven compressors. So if it has a run capacitor, we are good to go. Correct. Yep. Mini splits and, you know, inverter technology -inverter. are fantastic, but they already have it built in. Exactly. Oh. So now here's another good one. So I started thinking about this immediately. As soon as I fired this thing up, I went, okay. Refrigeration systems. What kind of horsepower are we now talking about? Because you know we're rated up to our six ton, and so I start thinking about um, you know horsepower systems up to a couple of horsepower. Or so refrigeration, circulator pumps. I'm thinking anything with a PSC motor. You know my brain's going. All right, what else can I do with this thing? Yeah, no, absolutely. So uh, seven horsepower, you know, give or take, is what you know it's mm -hmm. rated up to, uh, which covers a lot. That's um, a lot. And you know we are actually working on you know developing a soft start pump, if you will, where it's, that's what it's for. Um, right. You know, there's been testing done that it does work on any, you know, PC motor. So it should work on pumps, but we want to make one specifically for pumps. And we don't gotcha. have that right now. Okay. All right. So we've talked about, you know, what components, what systems do need the soft start when we're talking about different ACs. Mm -hmm. So if I have multiple ACs on a home, I'm going to have multiple units. Correct. Yep. Yep. So we've all seen the houses start. that have five or six AC yeah, units. Yeah. yeah. Uh, my house is not one of them, but yeah, they right. would need, you know, five or six soft starts. Sure. And warranty. Yeah. Warranty. So again, you know, uh, it should not affect the OEM's warranty just like a hard start would. Right. Um, so, you know, if it's installed correctly, there should be no issues. Okay. Fantastic. So now we get back to that one. We know that we're going to be doing some analysis going forward, looking at energy reductions. Uh, tell us a little bit more about what we see in the future for that. Yeah. So um, as we, um, you know, change as a country, getting more electrification, you know, we, we always know California is going to kind of lead the way, right, uh, in what's taking place. And so right now, you know, there across the country, more and more places are are implementing it, but there's a thing called peak demand and peak demand charges. Mm -hmm. And that peak demand basically is a way for utility companies to get paid for power uh, that they need to keep available, oh, but yeah. may not be using currently. So it's right. extremely expensive time to be running, you know, all your lights and, you know, appliances and, and everything. And it's probably right when you're getting home. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and the kids are home and everybody's turning on the lights and then using every single thing you have. And that's when you're getting hit with the peak demand charges. So, sure. you know, there's a, you know, going to be, you know, where we already know power is expensive. It's going to get more expensive yep. um, as time goes on. Uh, an average, usually about 3% uh, increase a year. Um, and, you know, that may change even more. But as power, you know, prices go up and peak demand you know, uh, is put in place, you know, mm -hmm. we could definitely see a higher energy costs. So yeah. with the soft start reducing, uh, your inrush amps up to, you know, 70%, uh, definitely during peak, uh, demand, you know, we could see a nice reduction, you know, in your power usage and the power bill, hopefully. And so anyway, that's kind of where we're at. Yeah. And yeah. that, you know, okay. just as an example, uh, a five ton unit, you know, might draw, you know, 36,000 watts and we can reduce that down to 12 or 15,000 watts. It's a big reduction. Yeah, definitely is. Um, Clifton, well, I'm yeah. going to jump in real quick and paint a big picture. Of yeah, here. let's do it. Early on, we pointed out that <clears throat> we're loading up our current grid with all kinds of electrical appliances. We're adding and adding and adding to this grid. And <clears throat> the product that we, as I've said through here today watching uh, we're talking about a 70 up to a 70 percent reduction in the inrush current um as we said it may not add up to 
a million dollars savings for the homeowner. But if this was on a million different units, exactly. uh, imagine the load reduction on the grid overall, as you have millions of air conditioners starting and stopping all over the country. Sure. If they had this type of technology, the demand on the grid during a hundred degree Those day in the hours. summer, yeah, right. Things would, oh, I huge. Mean, it would yeah. definitely yeah, exactly. reduce national demand on the grid, this type of technology. Yeah, you make a great yeah. point. You know, you think about just your home, right? And you're reducing your power load. Well, again, you have a million homes reducing their power load. You know, it's, it's a That's big That's a deal. significant difference. Seven, up to 70%. Again, heat pumps that are running year round, refrigeration sure. that's running year round, air conditioners, again, that are running all summer in the Midwest, uh, but down south, again, are running year round. Uh, I again, the numbers are mind boggling. If you have millions of units where Multiply you're able that. to write, that's sure. uh, that's very significant. And that's a huge, huge bonus for the for the grid in general. Yeah. And that's really why you make a great point. That's why we went after the residential market. I mean, there's millions yeah. and millions of homes and, you know, and that's where let's be honest, you know, that's where, you know, uh, we get hit in the pocket. Right. Yep, you know, is that, you know, and so. We want to be able to offer, you know, solutions to help, you know, homeowners with existing equipment, legacy equipment, you know, or, you know, let's just be honest. Most of, you know, us have a, you know, 13 to 16 seer unit. Um, yeah. Contractor the grade. The market is still Boy. a smaller market. Yeah, it's not um, new construction for sure. Right. It's starting to become Even new more. new construction around, you know, in the Midwest where we're at here. Yeah. <clears throat> most new construction are still getting... A single or even maybe oh, if you're lucky a two we stage. call it right builder grade right. for a reason you're it building is. grade right the, the um, low end because it's cost effective for the builder right and yeah. they're making you know a hundred different homes all at the same time in these subdivisions that are springing up everywhere yeah um again so something like this is useful even in new construction oh yeah i, I want to when i play that video I'll, I'll make a reference to my high efficient unit in my three-year-old uh National Construction Company, large construction company. Um, I won't say the names. But it, it, they make lots of neighborhoods around the country that are uh, not entry line homes. And yeah, I got a 14 seer PSC. Everyone yeah, in the neighborhood and, still. An interesting them. fact, um, real quick, while we were talking about new yeah. home builders, and um, and I put this up on LinkedIn the other day, but basically there was a uh, survey that went out to new builders and it was, you know, new technology that they're in, you know, interested in or, or yeah. emerging technology. Emerging technology. And 81% and said they were interested in backup power. Yeah, so absolutely. Interesting that, hey, if you're interested in, you know, backup power, hopefully, you know, you're looking at, you know, either higher efficiency equipment or, you know, soft start. Uh, for your existing newer units. Yeah, backup yeah. power doesn't work well if you're using, you know, bare minimum standard type, you know, air conditioning, right. heat pump type systems, right? Mm -hmm. Right. No, absolutely. And that was the importance of bringing this topic to, you know, to the audience. You know, we're going to see a ton of education starting in January. We're going to see the Department of Energy joining this entire effort to train our audience, to train the entire HVAC industry of the changes that are necessary, not just expected, necessary going forward. We're going to see our equipment changing. We're going to see manufacturers stepping up into higher end technologies. And so how can we assist current equipment that's in the field, PSC based equipment? There are solutions. Most people aren't aware of the solutions. So Aaron, fantastic having you here today. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's a it's um excited to talk about the topic and I'm, yeah. I'm really happy that you guys were willing to have me on. So thank yeah. you so much. How about the audience? Let's take a break. Anybody have any questions they want to bring in for Aaron or uh, Jason or myself? Because it's a good topic. I do see a lot of potential for this technology in other areas, and I'm hoping, Aaron, that you're going to explore those areas because I like like Clifton said, we're doers. I have to put my hands oh, on yeah. things and tinker with them. Yeah. And like Clifton said, once this is installed, what else can I use this on? Yeah. Where can well, I do? Uh, what can I do with this? Let's think of the opportunities here. Right. Yeah, exactly. So what I'm glad is there's there's you guys and there's a few others I'm talking to that all want to experiment with different things, and you know I hope we can and you know we can get new products out of it. Yeah, I do too. Because there's a lot of potential. As you brought up earlier, this is a village. We have to work together as an industry. And if we're embracing either higher efficiency technologies that have this type of uh, tech built into it, or we're going into you know standard type units and putting this type of technology into it, 
again, overall, if, you know, if there's enough of us doing it and enough of the homes are, are using it, we can reduce that overall demand on that grid. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, like you said, there's not one silver bullet. We, we have to use a bunch of different technologies to get there. So. Indeed. Okay, well, I don't see any other questions that have popped in. Let me um, let me grab that video from today. And, I just want uh, to double check with Aaron before you start that video. Yeah, it was up to about seven horsepower. You said is that's what I Correct. answered. Okay, Correct. I just wanted to double. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Fantastic. Okay, so we're going to take a look at installing a soft start on a legacy traditional single stage air conditioning unit. This particular high efficient unit is a 14 sear. So uh, we're not gonna hold that against it. We're gonna try to give this a longer life cycle. We're going to decrease the amount of current on startup and we'll see how efficient this thing runs and we'll put some gauges on it so we can actually track and monitor its current. Level. Okay, let's tear this thing apart and let's get a meter on it and get us a baseline analysis of how we're running before we install the soft start home. Okay, in our kit we're going to find some basic installation instructions, a bunch of connectors, let's find a good location for it. I'm pretty particular about my installs and I wasn't able to get it exactly vertical. I had a wiring connector coming through the back plate. So I got it in as good a location as I could, but still provided access to the entire electrical panel. Made sure that there was no refrigerant tubing behind our back panel. So we have a good clean place to attach this thing. The instructions refer you to go to softstarthome.com and select your brand so that you get equipment specific wiring which is really cool so you want to make sure to go there and check that out so that you get the exact application and let's bundle things up really nice so we got a good clean install now let's fire this puppy up and see what we have as far as the difference the soft start does give a slight delay to the compressor after the condenser fan motor and a noticeable change in the tone of the starting of the compressor. Okay, so conclusion, without the soft start, it had a peak inrush of 47.14 amps. And with the soft start, we had a peak inrush of 14.34 that's a pretty significant difference. Definitely would be substantial if we had this on a backup power source, particularly with a generator startup. All right, there's a little bit more to it if you wanna see the rest, but it's basically coming back to exactly what we're talking about, is that we have things that we can do to alter equipment that we already have to improve the electrical consumption and to reduce that inrush of current on our equipment to help long, you know, help the longevity of the motor of our compressor, and we can reduce that total consumption on our grid as these components are starting up. So, man, fantastic stuff! Uh, one last opportunity. Anybody have any more questions or comments they want to throw in while we're here? So one of the things while we're waiting and that uh, is interesting, we are doing uh, five or six field tests uh, down in South Florida um, this month where we are going to test the actual uh, decimal difference, yeah. the, the dBs between nice. before and after. Yep. So we're going to have some really good data to share with saying, hey, whether it's, you know, a percentage or an actual number of um you know, reduction in noise um, that's, you know, that we can show in decimals, you know, is going to be pretty fantastic. I'm excited to hear that. Yeah. And I did hear it in your video, by the way. So, mm -hmm. was... so you're talking about a drop in inrush current, but also a drop in the decibels as well. So that's a, a bonus. Yeah. 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 I so wish I would have did a sensitive to noise for sure, you know. Right. Uh, yeah. I wish I would have done a uh, audio recording before. 
Uh, but so there is that one of it firing up, but it, it it's not at the exact volume that the latter one was, uh, but it was a significant difference. So the first fire uh, without the soft start, my compressor was louder than my condenser. Um, on the second one, you can just barely hear the compressor over the condenser. Yep. So if, if anyone, um, you know, out in the audience has any questions, you know, my numbers and uh, emails there. Uh, so yep. feel free to uh, give me a call. And of course, you know, we welcome um, dealers uh, to, you know, come and talk to us. HVAC, electrical, uh, solar dealers. Generators. Generators. <laughs> yep, exactly. I'm sure. So. Okay. Jason, any other questions for Aaron while we're here? No, this is some great technology. I'm really... Again, like I said, I can't. I, I want to do a lot of things with it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, we got to get you one too, Jason. But uh, definitely looking forward to that. I like experiments too. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Okay. Well, I think we're going to wrap up the show. Then we appreciate everyone joining us today, and uh, make sure to come back next week as we continue our education on how our industry is changing and bringing in our key industry educators, professionals to keep us up to date with the changes and the standards in the HVACR industry. Thank you all so much. Thanks everyone. Thanks. Thank you for joining Did You Know? The ESCO HVAC Show. You want to see some of these great presenters in person? Well, then we'll see you at the National HVACR Educators Conference, where many of these guests will be presenting live classrooms, and you'll have a chance to interact with them. Would you like to watch this show again? Hey, no problem. Just head on over to YouTube to ESCO Institute. you have a topic that needs clarified about some kind of a change in the industry? Well, then let me know. See Beck at escogroup.org and we'll see what we can come up with.